Hello, in this video we're going to look at the plane sensor, volume sensor and position sensor. So the plane sensor detects an object if it's intersecting the plane. If we go into the view tab we can see that the plane has been generated at zero. So if any object passes through this plane the sensor out light will come on and the sense part will show the part that intersects the plane. Let's set up a conveyor as an example. Here I have set up a conveyor and a box. The conveyor has a surface velocity and the box is dynamic. So if we play the simulation, it will run along the conveyor. And at the end, it should drop off. So let's say we want to put the plane here and when the box intersects the plane, we should stop the conveyor. So what we can do is go over and select the plane sensor, the home tab, use this move tool. We can just manually move it towards the end of the conveyor about here. Want it on the conveyor itself. But there should do. So now we want to rotate the plane sensor. To do that we can double click to go to its properties. You can see that axis one is this point here, so it's currently 100 in the X. And axis 2 is this point here, which is currently 100 in the Y. We want our Y to be the width of the conveyor, which let me just measure it. It's 675. So we want this Y to be 675. Then we want this point here be 100 in Z and not in X. And apply. Let's just lower it down as well. So the next job is to say when something passes through the sensor you want to tell the Conveyor to stop its surface velocity. So to do that, go to here and add in a physics control smart component which we haven't covered yet. As you can see, it currently has a surface velocity of 300. We want no surface velocity when the sensor reads out. We can just add a NOT gate. Let's play the simulation. So when there's nothing there, you can see that it's currently saying there is. And that's because the plane sensor can see the conveyor. To fix this, you can either move the plane sensor up, or we can go into the belt conveyor object and deselect the detectable by sensor option. So if we play it again, go into the small component, we currently have no output. So now let's drag our box that we made onto the conveyor. And now it should stop if I can aim. Oop, there we go. So when it went on to the sensor, it said stop the service velocity and it stopped. We can drag it back and it should start up again. When it reaches it, it stops. The volume sensor is quite similar, but instead of a plane, it creates a box at zero zero. This means if anything is inside this box, it will 
given an output. If the partial hit option is deselected, it means that an object has to be fully inside the box for the sensor out to come on. Otherwise, any part of the object inside of the volume, the sensor will come on. And it also shows the sense part output. If we get rid of the plane sensor we made before and replace it with the volume, we can move the volume and move it up onto the conveyor. And let's decrease the size of this. We should do it. So when this object is fully inside this volume, it should stop. If it's partially inside, it will just carry on going. And we also need to connect the output. There we go. So if we start the simulation, it should fully enclose the box. Yes, just about. And you can see that we got the sensor out signal to come on. And therefore the conveyor stops. If we drag it so it's just outside the volume, so it only has a partial hit, it will carry on. Next sensor is the position sensor, which gives the position of a certain object. The position is currently referenced to the world or global, but we can choose it to reference in the object if we would like, such as a robot. We have to select the object we want to monitor the position, and we want to monitor the box in this case, and apply. We can see that this box here currently is at this position and this orientation in reference to the world, which is here. If we stop the simulation and drag the box, we'll be able to see these values change. If we had a robot here and we wanted to do work on this object, we can feed these values into the robot controller, reference the robot controller as the object, and then we'll know exactly where this object is. That's all for this video. Next time we're going to look at the closest object, the joint sensor, and the get parent. Thank you for watching. See you then.